Right, what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave this into a few separate videos. So there's going to be one long video on essentially how to get to the head gasket on this engine. Now, this engine is in a lot of different BMWs, the 325, the 330. They're all more or less the same. But what I'm also going to do is I'm going to split the video up into separate parts. So if you just want to see, for example, how to take off the intake, I'll do a separate video. How to take off the vanner system, I'll do a separate video. How to take off the exhaust, I'll do a separate video. So if you're just looking for a specific thing, go to another video. If you wanna see the whole procedure, stay on this video. Sorted. Hello and welcome to another budget and leg it video. Now we have an E46. Uh, BMW here this is the two and a half litre petrol version of that and all I know is again as you can see this is how it came to me all stripped out um, there was some damage done to the front you can see the fan cowl in here kind of broke something came up through the and broke the fan and did all sorts of damage and they kept running it and uh, the customers telling me that the head gasket is gone um, they've changed the fan they changed the water pump and it's still overheating so he's asked me to um basically strip off the head and that's what we're going to do now what i'm going to do first is i'm going to strip off all the front of the car because it's just going to make it easier for you know timing everything up in the long run everything's gonna to have to come off anyway it just bolts off so all the radiators the front the the front uh, cowling the front cross member Obviously the rear, all this has to come off so you can actually get to the back of the engine because half the engine is, is underneath the dash. Well, not so much underneath the dash, but underneath all this. So I'm gonna take off all the kind of auxiliaries first just to make my life easier. It's gonna take a little bit of time to do it, but it's gonna make my life easier to do the actual job, to take it off and to put it back. So that's what we're gonna do first. And uh, yeah, that's what we're gonna do, sorted. Right, not many people might see or might have seen this tool before. They're absolutely brilliant for taking off viscous fans. Because as we know, viscous fans can be annoying to actually take off. I'll show you once I've got it kind of off, but I've got it in place now. And I've kind of loosened this, so it should be kind of gone. It has. Ah, I'll get the fan off. I'll actually show you this. Very simple, but it's absolutely brilliant. 
So what it does is, it grabs it along the box, <coughs> like that, and it stops the pulley from moving. But you can do it a couple of ways. You can grab the bolts like this, but the way I had it on this particular one is I just wedged that down there, like that, wedged it on the top bolts, and it still does the same thing. And it stops this pulley from spinning. It allows you to get the spanner in and just take off the viscous fan really easy without doing any damage, without getting hammers and punches and trying to shock the bolt off, do anything like that. No damage whatsoever, comes off nice and easy, sorted. Right, so what we're going to do next is we're going to take off the inlet manifold. Now we're going to make it life a little bit easier for ourselves by taking out some of these. We can't do it all until we actually start taking off this, but we can, you know, make our life a little bit easier. So the first thing I'm going to do is just disconnect the uh, brake uh, servo pipe and the actual uh, the ignition power lead here for the jump start, and then we can actually start getting to a few things down here. I'm going to take them off because I'm not going to be able to film them. So you can see the, the air box breather or the pipe for the air box breather. There's a couple of uh, connections here which we need to remove. Then the next thing we need to remove, you just see the bolt down there is the oil dipstick. So once I've got them few things removed, we'll switch the camera back on. All right, first thing I'm going to take off is this, which is a 90 mil. that just screw that back there so you can't really lose it then easiest way to remove this is normally what we'll do is we'll just remove it from here and pull this out a little bit out here which will release this, lower it back, and then pull out. This is a bit overkill for this, but yeah, escape. Now some of these things aren't necessary to remove, it just makes your life easier when you come to actually work on all this. Like I said, we can't release this one yet, but this is ready now, once we actually get this out of the way to do that. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to remove this because this is for the coil packs. So I'm just going to get this actually removed and then the dog can keep Now I don't know how much we cut before my phone decided to ah before my phone decided to fill itself up with memory but we're going to take off this wire which is all the coil packs so we can get to the engine properly isn't that lovely look at that So I'm just going to take off these wires for coil pack, the earth here. You can see, I'm just going to pull out these like that, which releases the wire there. So I'm just going to do that, get out the earth, and then this will release this, and I can put all this over to that side. All right, so as you can see, I've just disconnected all that, which will release this whole thing here once I actually put the, the, the pipe under there and that will then just allow me to completely take that off and just leave me the engine free. Move next is the actual uh, sensors and the wires here. So other ones for the CCV system. Then we've got to release these little clips off the injector to take the fuel line off. Before we do that, you wanna make sure there's no um, fuel pressure in the system. 
So get a rag over there, press that Schrader valve in, make sure there's no fuel pressure in it. And once I've kind of done that, it's gonna be difficult to film, but we just need to pull these pipes or these connections off and release that. And then also, again, you can't quite see, but just here, you can just see the clip there. I have to pull that clip to the side to release the actual uh, wiring of the injectors on all of them. But again, I'm not gonna be able to film that because you can, you can hardly see it. But once you're doing it yourself, it will make a lot more sense. Right, I'm gonna try and film this first one just so you get the idea. So I'm just gonna pull this little clip to the side. Like that. Not completely off, just to the side. And that will release, there you go, look. That will release this, but I have to do it to the other five now to actually take that completely off. Then we can actually release this here, which is for the um, variable valve timing, the van off system. Uh, that's one of the valves for it. And yeah, let me keep going. Right, just like I said, unfortunately, look at that. It just completely broke. And it's absolutely just, look, it's just, I mean, yeah, it's just completely and utterly gone. I knew it was. And I knew it would. Anyway, I've got that out. You can see what I did with the clips. I just bent them to the side. You can see that clip there now, look, let that focus. Just bent it to the side and it allows it to take off. What that allows me to now do is get the spolts for the fuel rail. Just turn the camera or the light on and you can see there's the bolts for the fuel rail, which also allows me to get to the bolts to the actual inlet manifold and uh, it just lets us see a hell of a lot more if you want to take these out you just press them together and just pull them out i took that one out because it was easier but yeah you are going to run into issues like this no matter how careful you are these are going to break they just will believe me right the next thing is just 10 mil bolts four of them and uh, the clips on the six injectors which are there and then we can take the fuel rail out Right, so as you can see this is now removed and we can really see the bolts for the actual intake now i should be able to pull this up and disconnect the quick disconnect on this but i can't seem to pull up at the minute but we're going to leave that because that's not the end of the world at the minute what i'm going to do is start stripping a few more things this side because we've got another bolt under here we have to strip we've got the um the air intake pipe we've got the uh, dipstick there's a power distribution um, board there as well, or, or connection, should I say, that we've got to take off before we actually take off that, and then we can get this intake manifold off. But again, I'm not gonna be able to film this, because as you can see, everything's really tight. I'm gonna to have to be careful of all the vacuum lines and stuff, because the chances are the most we're gonna break as well. Um, a few more uh, sensors to disconnect from this power distribution here. But again, once I get a bit more off, I'll show you what I mean. Right, as you can see, I've got a lot of stuff off. Um, this is the power distribution um, block I was telling you about, and there's loads of different sensors on. Sensors for the um, Vanos system, for the uh, camshaft position sensor. There's also ones for the idle air control valve, also for the flaps and all for the flaps and everything um so all that's been taken off i've just dropped the bolts down there it's a t40 torque bolts that takes off all this i can't get to i, I would like to take the idle air control valve off but i can't because of the way the jubilee clips are but i've, I've moved it off the actual intake manifold which is going to be good enough for the minute then i have to take off the actual bolts for the uh, power distribution because that's also bolted on to the um intake manifold then i've got to get the bolt off you can just see there for the uh, dipstick because also the ccv system is connected to the dipstick so and the and the pipe on that's going to most probably break as well and i want to show you when i get this dipstick out just what might happen to your car because the oil won't be able to soak back because these can get blocked up causing other issues as well once i've done that we can then undo the bolts down there and actually take the bad boy off right you have to be careful there's a 13 mil bolt right down there but there's an o-ring and like i said there's another pipe on here and they normally the o-ring doesn't normally come off 
with it, but that's not the end of the world. It's, there we go. It's more so the other pipe that we're gonna struggle with to get off. Um, and I'm not gonna be able to show it on camera, but hopefully you can just see just down there, you can see that second pipe there, you can just see it, just focus camera. Just see that second pipe there, that's what's connected to the VV, or the CCV system. And uh, that's the awkward thing to try and get off. Um, the power distribution board is in my way now, so I'm gonna have to try and take that off. There's a 10 mil bolt there, and there's a couple more 10 mil bolts. I'm just not gonna be able to get the camera in, and I'm struggling to find them myself, but they're down there, and then this will come off. All right, once you get the intake pipe and the idle air control valve off i couldn't actually get it off the normal way because the jubilee clip was right underneath there was no way of getting it even from underneath the engine would have to have been out so what i did is i just used one of these nibblers and i just cut it off essentially didn't do any damage to the pipe so that's out the way we've now disconnected the uh plug going to the uh, throttle body and now i've got to take out the throttle body bolt so you can see right under here as well is the last bolt for the power distribution box we need to get that out of the way too so as you can see there's hardly any room it looks like there's a lot of room on camera but there just isn't see the other bolt there let's take them bolts out and you can just see the bolt there as well that we need to take out for the uh for the intake and you can just see the bolt there again so four 10 mil bolts well actually five because we've got uh, four 10 mil bolts and a 10 mil nut One of the O-rings for the injectors, which is important, just there, can't lose them. And of course, the last one has to fall, but we'll get that once we get the manifold off. I also got out the dipstick. Now, lucky enough, the pipe came off here really easy. This is the pipe here. It just came off nice and easy, but this is what I was telling you about. This can get caked full of crap and not allow the CCV system to actually return the oil. So you want to clean this out really good once you actually um you know take this out this one is not too bad but you still want to get it out and clean it so there we go sorted right just the last bolt to remove now which is just down there for this intake system and that's a 16 mil and then uh, this should be good to get out sorted right should be able to now Take this off. Still going to be awkward. We have to be careful. Um, we need to move a few things out of the way. This wire also needs to be kind of threaded back through, and it's just going to be awkward to actually do this. So there's no point in me filming it because it's just going to be awkward. But you'll kind of work it out yourself. You've just got to feed this this uh, wire through and just kind of jiggle it about and it will come out. Right, so I just kind of pulled it towards me this way. And as you can see, once we get this head down. Right, just double check you haven't got anything else connected to it. No pipes or connections you have forgot. There's one here that I have forgot for the VVC or the CCV system. Trying clip that off it's going to break most probably because they just will this pipe also we need to disconnect 
and then it's just a case of bringing it all to you and you should be good to go right there you go you can see the bolts we have to take off there and this was underneath this is the the last bolt you have to take off but you have to remove obviously all the throttle body the power distribution and all that you can see the uh, ccv system here uh, lucky enough this pipe didn't break normally they all just break we've only actually broken one pipe so far but more will break i can assure you just the way it is now good idea to clean all this so that's that done you can now see everything here this pipe here this connection inside the block they always break um, and the bottom pipe again they just they just always break uh, just with the the heat of them the age of them and all that it's just a nightmare um, so just be aware of that this was the connection I was telling you about with the um, I'm gonna push this down so what you need to do is I just uh, get two hands on it so the fuel rail the way you disconnect it you to push it down into it and then push this blue clip down and then it should all release just like that so you push it completely down then push the blue clip down then pull this up and that will release that now if you're going to have to take the inlet manifold off for whatever reason i would personally be changing a few things now temperature sensors here these pipes obviously regardless because they're going to cause you issues get your starter motor taken out and reconditioned even if it's good doesn't matter just do it because to do all this just for a starter motor things like the cct valve system do all that as well um, because if you don't you're going to have these issues in the future because you know it's a big job taking all that out and why it's out now you might as well spend a few quid to save yourself a fortune and a lot of hassle in the future if you go any further you just want to put some tissue down there so no crap can get into the engine well to stop a lot of it anyway it only takes a few seconds and it can save your engine right the next thing we're going to do before we move the vanos system don't do anything with that yet we need to take the exhaust off uh the manifold off which is awkward enough because the reason why i don't like taking that off is i like to get the engine to top dead center and you can see just underneath the starter motor well you can't maybe see at the minute but you will there's a big hole there for the locking pin to go in because i want to get this timed up before i take this off because the two little uh, cam gears on here if you spin the engine once the vanos system is off they pull out it's not a big deal but I just like to keep everything, you know, as, as, as much in place as I possibly can. The reason why I took all the belts off is because when you take these pins out here, a load of oil is going to come out and I don't want it to get on all the belts and stuff. This is the feed pipe for the Vanoff system here. And so, yeah, basically the next stage is to take off the manifold, which we're going to have to do from underneath. That's why we've got it on the lift. So before we go underneath we can see the connections here for our O2 sensors. Now you want to mark them, which is the front bank and the uh, second bank, just so you don't get them confused. Because if you do, they will kind of fit into each other. And you know, if you get a code, you're going to be replacing the wrong sensor. So just mark them up before you do anything. You can use Tipex, you can use whatever you want. Mark them with a, you know, some um, masking tape and write on them, whatever you want to do. But I'm just going to put some Tipex on here and here, and I'm going to leave that one so I know which way they go. And then we can go underneath. I'm going to do is just take out the air conditioning pump because it's only a few bolts it's all disconnected anyway and it's just going to help me a little bit get to these bolts here it's not that you need to it's just this is awkward um we're going to have to disconnect the engine mount we're going to have to jack the engine up put blocks of wood in and do all sorts just to get these exhaust manifolds off they're a nightmare and anything you can do to make your life easy you might as well for the sake of a few bolts and a few seconds this is coming off right so we've taken out the air conditioning pump and we can get to these two bolts really nice and easy now and you can kind of see maybe not you can kind of see the other bolts on the first bank but that's where we have a big problem i'm gonna have to take this bottom cover off that's not really a big deal um the bolts for the exhaust just completely rusty they're all gonna snap and if you can see in here which you can't see put the steering rack Oh, the steering arm is going to have to come off there's no way i can get them bolts or even the exhaust down with the steering rack in the way so 
Most we're gonna have to disconnect the steering rack from here, which is that's simple enough. Move the steering rack out of the way or just kind of maybe get out of the way, but that's not really my problem. It's the steering arm that I really need to get out of the way inside the car. Or just if I can remove the knuckles, you see there's a knuckle right, oh, right there. And then there's one, which I can't quite get to. There it is. So maybe if I just remove that actually thinking about it, that would be my easiest option. Just removing uh, this knuckle here and the compression joint on it. And then I'll be able to get the exhaust off. <laughs> but I'm gonna have to soak them, give them a good wire brushing. And uh, yeah, so I'm gonna do all that, take off this, and then we'll turn the camera back on. All right, I finally got them off. I had to cut them off with a tungsten bit because you just couldn't get anything in there but I can't release them. So all the uh, gaskets are just completely uh, gone as well. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this whole exhaust system off because it's only literally a few bolts here and then a couple of uh, mounts here and there. It's just gonna make my life a lot easier for taking down the manifolds here because I can actually pull them forward. And with this stud sticking out, I can't pull them forward. The next thing I have to do is take off the engine mount because that's just in our way. So you can see there's a few bolts on the engine and obviously the main bolt which you can't quite see on top. And then we're going to have to jack up the engine a little bit and put a block of wood in there to support the engine essentially acting like the engine mount. But as you can see the engine mounts in a way but also our steering is in the way as well. So. We're going to have to take all that off, which is just going to be so much fun, people. And again, I'm not going to be able to film it because you just can't see anything. Um, but once I've done that, we'll turn the camera back on and uh, we'll try and get these exhausts off. Right, so we've got a 16mm bolt there, four 13mm bolts on the engine. You see there's two more left to go. And then there's the earth strap, which is a 13mm and then we'll jack the engine up and we should be able to bring this out this way. This is another reason why I took off the um, air conditioning pump. It's gonna make my life easier on this too, but we're gonna to have to jack up the engine and I'm gonna, there's no point in me filming all this, but jack up the engine, I'm gonna wedge a piece of wood between here and the actual subframe. That will keep the engine supported until we put that back and gives us a lot more room to actually take the exhaust off. Right, so now as you can see, this is coming out because the air conditioning pump is out of the way and I disconnected it from the car there. So there we go. If you look underneath, you'll see the piece of wood that we have been used to block it up. And now it just means it's a lot easier to kind of see some of the bolts. It's still a nightmare. I've still most probably got to take the steering rack off or the steering uh, column off, but um, we might, no, we're not going to get away with that doing it. But yeah, we'll continue. I'm not going to be able to actually film this, but you can just see the 11 mil bolts that are there. I'll try and get the camera in a bit closer so you can see them. So if I go, you can see them there and then there. And it looks easy because it's on camera, but believe me, there is no room and they are awkward. Right, we've got one of them off and as you can see sometimes the studs come out sometimes the bolts just come out that doesn't really matter as long as you kind of get it out of the way you can see the stud pattern here so essentially there's two four six eight bolts for each um each bank and this cover is also the actual gasket so you can't remove the cover until you actually remove the studs and you can see them here look this is this is the actual uh, cover as well. Just leave it hanging down there, it doesn't really matter. What we need to do is get the other one now. It is awkward, it is a nightmare. Um, you, you might think, you know what, it's just easy to take the engine out. And depending on what you're doing, it most probably is. But we've got to get one more out and then we can actually start working on the head itself. Right, and there we go. I actually did it from the top in the end, so it means I didn't have to uh, take out the steering arm there but uh, it's all out now so that's how to get the manifold removed very very awkward if some of the bolts are rusty and rounded you're in a lot of trouble um, if that's the case you might as well just take the engine out it'd be easier um, but they're now down and the next thing is 
the head. So we're going to have to kind of time this up to get it roughly in the right timing before we start stripping this out. Sorted. Right, I am going to attempt to try and get this pipe off without breaking it, which I do not really hold out any hope for, but we will try. Right, I've undone the 13 mil bolt there <clears throat> and the 10 mil there. And we just got to be very, very careful and try and get this out. I'm just going to kind of do that very gently and just try and get this out without it breaking. So I'm going to keep doing that with a screwdriver both sides and just angle this out very easily. What I'm going to have to do is disconnect the feed pipe to the Vanos system. Um, it seems to be coming out, but it's now hitting the feed pipe. Right, success in some ways, because I actually managed to get it out without breaking it. But as you can see, it's just rotted away. Um, so I actually managed normally this sticks in here on the first O-ring. This, this all, all this normally sticks in. But as you can see, we got the two O-rings out, but it's just completely and utterly just rotted away. So uh, just as I thought, you know, I've never, ever seen one of these to come out, um, you know, a genuine one that's been in there for a long time to come out without breaking. Never seen it. So there we go. Just as I thought, baggage. What we're going to do now is we're going to take the head off. So... We're going to take all the coil packs out first is just there's two earth straps here one on, one on the front one on the back but someone's already been at this and haven't put it back uh, then we just take out the screws in the middle and we're going to basically take out this coil pack as a complete assembly and then so we can actually see the um, cams and everything else in there and see what sort of state this engine is in you can also see that someone's been in here because we've got different coils. These are the genuine coils, and these ones look like a Lucas coil. Is that a Lucas coil? Ha, I'm right, look at that. Lucas coil. So, uh, yeah, someone's definitely been, you know, changing these in its lifetime, which is kind of expected. Nothing particularly wrong with that, apart from they're not genuine. Right, to take off the air straps, there's a couple of 8 mil nuts. And then behind that is some 10 mil kind of funny looking bolts. Uh, bolts with like a washer on and then a thread on the inside. And then it's 10 mils to take off the uh, coil packs and then we can get to the ones around the actual uh, cover itself. Right, so it's a ring of 10 mil bolts that go around the top but once you take them off They've kind of a washer and like a rubber seal and you want to make sure you get that all off. It's just because when you pop this, you don't want them to fling out and get lost and do, you know, all sorts of stuff. So this should now just come off and it's always nice to see kind of what condition the engine's in for the first time. I'm going to do this on camera, maybe not. Oh, I feel a lot of sludge. Not too bad. Um, you can see the engine has been serviced uh, quite regularly because I felt some sludge under here. Yeah, there's the sludge I felt. But I've seen a hell of a lot worse. Um, I've seen a hell of a lot worse. That's not too bad at all. Right, so what we're going to do now is we're going to take the Vanas system off. But before I do that, what I like to do is just kind of get the engine kind of timed up. You don't have to put any timing tools in yet. We just want to get the engine timed up. So what I'm essentially waiting for is see these two lugs. These two lugs have to be straight. We're also looking down at the alternator just below it. You can't see where the uh, flywheel uh, locking tool can be. And we've also got a mark here 
on our engine which lines up once I turn this around so you can actually see it there it lines up with the mark on the flywheel so I'm gonna have to turn this till everything lines up before I take off that the reason is there's two like little uh, you might not be able to see them, two like little uh, cams and valves in here and as you're turning the engine with this off they'll slide out you might want to turn the engine where this is off for whatever reason and or if you know if you haven't got it timed and you want to maybe get it timed where this is off they will start pulling out so if you kind of get it timed now you don't really have to do it once this is off um, if you're going to want to turn it while this is off you just put the special timing tool back on here and that kind of stops them but it's just nice to kind of get it straight first before you actually take that off and um, just be careful once you take this off a lot of oil is going to come out that's why i've removed all the bolts all the belts if you haven't you're going to get obviously a lot of oil once you take off these this is a normal thread then you've got like a um, plastic insert then you've got a left-handed thread inside that and the few bolts around there and oil is going to kind of come out of there uh, i've just I know I took this off on, a, on, a, on the previous part of the video, but I just kind of put that back hand tight just because I want to show you kind of the way it is as you take it off. Right, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to turn the engine. I've got a 22 mil on the engine. And what you can do first is just line up the mark with the bottom one and then see, because you might have to turn this round again. Always turn it clockwise. Uh, where is it? Okay, we're coming close. Okay, now do we have that up there? Just let me. Now, that's it lined up there. We can see the two valve uh, lobes are actually pointed together, which is good. They are again pointing straight up. Now, just for the starter motor. You see down here, you just see, um, yeah, and anyway, there is the locking pin, and that's all good. So, that's good enough now to take this off. Um, and like I said, we know we've practically more or less kind of got it timed. All right, so the first thing we're going to take off is these two little caps here 8 mil Allen key. Now, I know this is completely overkill, um, but it's just so nice and smooth, this gear wrench, 120 tooth. Some oil's gonna come out here once you do this. And um, then what we need to do, oh, ears. Again, that's why I took all the belts off. Doesn't matter on this particular one, but just bear that in mind on yours. Lovely. Right, what we need to do now is just take out these little caps. You see they just come out quite easy. And just in behind there now, that is the left-handed uh, bolt that we have to take out next and well, now we've got two t30 torques in here that we need to actually do the opposite way because like i said they're left-handed threads you see there look so don't do these the wrong way because you'll snap them or round the actual uh, part in the middle, which isn't good. Believe me, you're going to be in trouble then. There we go. Sorted. Right, so now take off the oil feed pipe. I obviously took this off before, that's why it's loose. Be careful of the washers. What you can do is just kind of move that out of the way, screw that back in there, just because it can't get lost then. And then all I've got to do is crack all these bolts around on these nuts, sorry. I think there's a yeah, little nut. is 
just in a stupid place. And then a 13, and it should be good. This should now come off. And there we go. Now, I don't know, but I might be able to do a video on how to rebuild these because they're not actually that difficult, believe it or not. Um, what you do want to make sure is you need to take the gasket off because when you put the timing tool on, this gasket is in the way. So this gasket needs to come off. It doesn't need to come off now, but it needs to come off before we actually, you know, put everything back together and time it. Right, so that's how to take the van off system off. Very simple. These are the little uh, kind of valvey piston things I was talking about. Uh, as you move the engine now, these will slide in and out. Um, so that's why I've kind of got the engine more or less in time. So I don't really have to turn it. But that's what I was actually referring to about the things that would slide out. Right now, we're going to take off the head, but there's a few things we need to know first. Uh, the chances that this head isn't warped is quite slim. Um, they just do warp. They're an alley head and alley block. But the problem is, when they actually warp, if you imagine the, f the middle of it kind of pushes up and warps, it can sometimes... A lot of the time, especially on these particular engines, it can pull the head bolt up and damage the threads in the block. So it pulls the threads up in the block. So we need to make sure of that first before we kind of really go any further. Um, so I'm going to take off the chain and everything. I'll show you how to do that. But once I've done that, what you can actually do is you can actually just uh, release the, the chain tension here. And you can just actually crack the head bolts off and retighten because what we're going to do is we're going to crack the head bolts in order off and then we're going to re um tension them back down re torque them back down to see if any of the threads are pulled now it's not a hundred percent accurate but it gives you a really good idea knowing if your block needs work or not you can buy special uh, kits and stuff to fix them they're fixable it's just quite expensive um so that's what we need to do first. We need to make sure that uh, it isn't warped or the threads aren't pulled. We want, we'll take it off then and actually turn the head around and actually measure the head. But I just want to kind of see if the threads are pulled and one of the easiest ways is to crack them, put them back down. But we've got to also use electronic torque wrench and I'll show you the reason why. It's because when you're actually using a uh, digital torque wrench, is um, if the bolts are stretched or the threads are pulling, as you're tensioning it, the, 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 the torque wrench will actually hold the torque and it might actually start loosening. So in other words, let's say we go into 100 newtons. It might go to 90 and then all of a sudden start dropping off. The bolt's still spinning, but the actual uh, reading on the torque wrench might be going 89, 88, 87. That will give you a good indication that the threads are being pulled. You don't really get that with the old traditional uh, torque wrenches, but with the new digital ones, you get that. Right, now be very careful, because you can see these plates, they have front on them. You can actually see the word front. Sometimes it might just have F. So when you put these back, you want to make sure you get them the right way. We need to push this down first. You can just see, push that down there. And I'm going to put in behind it, you can see the hole there. I'm going to put this locking pin in, just put keeps the tension off. But what you've also got to do is, when you're reusing this chain, is this is actually timed onto here. So what I'm going to do is, when I remove this pulley, I'm going to put a cable tie in and around here to stop these actually moving on the um, on the pulleys. Now there is a special in the kit. There is a special um, uh, little special jig for these to actually line these back up properly when you buy the timing belt kit. But it's just as easy to put it on here now you know, to cable tie this on, it's just as easy. So we're gonna push that down first, take off these bolts, and then uh, we can get to the main chain. So what I'm gonna do is push it down my hand, push this pin in, make sure it goes in, and there we go, look. We have the tension off that chain, simples. 
Right, so what I'm going to do first, now I've got all that done, is just take off these three. Like I said, you really want to be watching out for these plates because they all have to go on in a certain way. Um, As you can see it actually says front on it there so you can't just see the word front hopefully the camera is going to get to that anyway it says it there so you don't want to put it back the other way that's what i'm trying to get you have to be very careful what i'm going to do now is hopefully i can get it in there normally you can just pull that out a little bit because i want to get a cable tie Right there. Now these, you can't really go wrong with these. I'll, I'll get this out in a second because these are actually spline, but there's a big, there's a big spline. So you can't put these on wrong, but I just want to keep, I want to keep that, um, that chain in place. Do the same again here. Now, what you've also got to remember in this one is there's a little arrow here. You can we see that? And that has to line up with the top. As I turn that, I just moved that. But um, obviously not about to put it back now. But once we time that, that little arrow has to come back at the top. And again, you can see this plate's got a big F. So you know it's going to the front. And what I want to do is get the get that one in now. It's going to take off these three bolts now, and I can release this one from that, and I can put my cable tie again back on there, and we're going to be good to go. Right, so it's an E8 inverted top. just put that in there and again that's just going to hold it for me so I know we're going to be good to go what I suggest is you just kind of leave these in the way they came in so you know if you put them that way that that goes that way that goes that way and so on I do want to do is get a couple more cable ties just one here and one there before I take that off this can't go anywhere now but it's just Handy to have them there. As you can see, that's moving, but it's still, it can't go anywhere. Boom. Now, this is what I was telling you about with these lot. You can only put these in one way. So you can't go wrong with these. They will physically only fit one way. You can see the big line there and the big one there. So that there's a big, big spline against the small ones. So you can only go one way so don't worry about them. We're just going to take off this and this and keep them all together just so you know uh, again that can only go in one way just so you know which one goes with which and uh, again I'm going to cable tie all them together I'm going to do the same with this one and just put cable ties in all these just so I know I'm not going to really get anything confused. 
sorted. Right, so that's the way I've done it. It's just all cable tied, so I can't get them confused. You can't really get them confused anyway, but if you're not used to it, it's just easier to do it this way. And I've just screwed the bolts back in there, even though I'm going to have to take these ones back off again to get this one. But it's, you know, it just kind of keeps everything nice and neat and out of the way. Right, all I've got to do now is release the chain tensioner, which is here, and obviously take these three bolts off here. That will then take that off, essentially making the head free of the engine. I'm not worried about the bottom, it, it can't really fall off the bottom cam, so don't worry about that. But as you can see, this angle mark, or this triangle mark here as well, it's the same with the other uh, plates I took off, needs to be on top of here. That's where they need to be. So it needs to be lined up when you're putting it all back together. Make sure that's lined up first before you do anything. So this is just a 32 mil. There we go. And you'll see the chain should completely slacken off once this comes out. And in the timing belt kit, there's a special thing to put back here to actually chain or to tension the chain as you're putting everything back. There we go, you can see how much that moves. Lovely. Right, the only thing that's a little bit worrying is on some of these, I'll see if I can find it now, on some of these you can actually see a slight coloration which normally intends it got quite hot. The backs are quite bad compared to the front, so it does look like this engine got cooked a fair bit. Um, so like I said, the chance of this being warped is quite, uh, is quite good. I'm just not worried about the head warped, I'm just more worried about the threads I've pulled in the block. That's what's gonna cause this job to be, uh, yeah, not worth it. Right, so all I've got to do is take off these three bolts. This is now loose because we've took the tension off the chain, but it's stopping me from kind of taking this off. So there's three 12 mils. Just quickly whip that off. And then we are ready to take the head off. You do have to be careful, these can only go one way. You can see the collar here is longer than the collar there. So when you're putting them back, remember that. Again, just put the bolts back. You can't really mess them up because they are different lengths, but as you can see, they'll only stick through the right length. Now we can actually take off the guide and then get that out. Lovely. Right, so we've got two um, E8 Torx, one down there and one in here. To get this one in here, you're gonna to have to use a quarter inch drive because even a half inch or a three eighths will not fit in here and that was too tight and now we can actually remove this get that bolt out and there we go one long bolt and one short bolt and that's out now. You can actually take that off and we're good to go. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to screw this back on in here just so I don't lose them and keep them 
somewhat in order. And then with these back on. Now be careful when you're doing this, because you don't want these too loose so they fall inside your engine. Um, you can take them out and you can put them in a box, you can label them, you can do whatever you want. This is just what I'm doing. More than one way to skin a cat. Sorted. Okay. That one kind of felt okay. That one. So that one. It's in the middle. If we're going to run into an issue, it's going to be in the middle. I need to take this off first before I get to that one. But I just want to check. The ones in the middle. Right, let me uh, let me just take off this first and then I can get to that one and I'm not going to film undoing this unless I come across an issue then I'll turn the camera back on right I've taken off that back cover and I've got down to the last kind of ones in the center this one doesn't feel good it, it just doesn't feel good um, no this one doesn't feel good that one I'm worried about that one This one doesn't feel good either. So these two don't feel right. Right, so we've got two potential problems. So what I'm going to do is get the torque wrench set up now. We're going to retorque them down and see if we do have an issue. Right, I've got them all off. So more or less, I've like two revolutions of them all turned out. And as you can see, this one comes out really easy by hand. This one's spinning out. This one isn't really, but these two, like this, it's not, it's not spinning out by hand when it should do. And even when I get this on it, it's very tight. I can feel it, it's, it's too tight. So that's a normally a good indication that the threads are pulled. It almost feels, compared to others, it feels like it's cross-threaded. If you've ever had that kind of feeling before, it should be as loose as all these, and it just isn't. Um, so I think we've got three bolts here problem. We've got this one, this one, I think this, is it this one? Or is it this one? Or is it this one? I can't remember. Anyway, there's definitely two on this side and one on this side. Um, we're going to retorque it down and we're going to see what we get. 40 all up at first. I'm not going to have an issue with them at 40. And what you'll find with a torque wrench, especially a digital one like this, you'll see um, the readings go up. But if the bolt was stretching, that reading would suddenly drop down, but I'm still tightening it, if that makes sense. Um, it's not going to do it at the 40, but it will do it when I'm doing, say, like the last 90. So I'm just going to do all these at 40 first, and I'll show you the 90, what I mean, what happened with the 90. Right, this is going to be the first 90, and this is where we don't want to see it. The degree is going back. That's it. 
Good. So, like I said, it's really going to be the second 90 where I'm going to do it. So I'm just going to do all these 90 and then we'll come back and we'll do the second 90. Right, this is it. I'm, I'm worried about the ones in the centre. The ones on the outside felt okay. It was the ones in the centre that felt a little bit dodgy. Yeah, that went. Ah, it's not good. That's them threads gone. Uh, just let me reset this now. Did you hear that? Right, I'm only going to do one more. Um, doesn't feel I'm not gonna go another one um, the one is enough yeah this isn't good right and I know what people are gonna say oh you should never read talk head bolts. you should never do this you broke that bolt I didn't break the bolt I just want to show you the bolt isn't broke it's the threads that have pulled As you can see, that hasn't, but if you look really close, I don't know if the camera's going to show that there's all little bits of grit that look like grit. You can actually see it right there, there. That's the threads. There you go. I don't know if the camera's showing it now. See on my finger? You see that? Is that zooming in? Look at that. That's the threads pulled out the block. Um, that's the problem with these, and that's what I was worried about. Um, if one do it, you can buy a special kit to replace them all, but I wasn't going to go any further because once one does it, the, you know, there's going to be a couple more to do it. And it's always normally the middle you have to worry about. Right, so there's two E10s down there and this should now come off. And we're going to see what damage has actually been done. There we go. I can actually... Oh, I've still got right wasn't looking I've still got a couple of wire connections here just let me undo them first right that's the thread we definitely know is damaged I can see that thread is damaged. That thread is damaged. That one looks all right. That one's damaged. Let me get you in closer. Right, uh, where is the one? That's the one we did. So obviously that's kind of the worst. When you look at, which one is it? Look at that one. You can see all the little bits. Hopefully you can see that. All the little bits in that one. That one's kind of the same. Uh, you can see the little bits in that one too. Hopefully the camera's showing this. That one is kind of okay. That one looks okay. The ends, you see the difference between the ends. Look how clean them are compared to the other ones. And uh, yeah, let's see this head gasket now where it was actually gone. I've actually done is I've left the bolts in there but you can actually see you can just see a bit of the metal there look that's one thread you can see metal now there's oil and water and everything on it but you can see bits of metal there you can see bits of metal there bits of one there the ends are absolutely perfectly fine just like we knew they were you can see again if I get close you can see look See a little bit of metal there. It's not good when you look closely at this. Um, that's why we actually 
torque it back down again because you don't want to do all this work you know get the head skimmed you know, buy all the parts and then for you to realize you know you put it all down you destroy your new head bolts and your and your blocks basically the threads in your block are destroyed that's why we do this now um but yeah see that one's fine that one's fine you can see the ones in the middle yeah you can just see where it's uh what the hell is that what is that can you see that you get a pick and get that out all right i think this is part of the old water pump looks very water pumpy -ish to me So I wonder what else is stuck in there. Um, oh yeah, that looks like the veins. It does, doesn't it? It looks like the, yeah, that's water pump. So, yeah, water pump is in there. So you can see this engine really hasn't had a happy life. Let's see if we can uh, see exactly where the head gasket was gone. I had a quick look at the head gasket and I can't really see like anything wrong as such, but we can see the the remnants of the water pump so we know it's definitely overheated but maybe it wasn't driven you know for too long but the head's just warped which has opened up a gap um so i can't really see you can see you know these cylinders are a bit more washed than them but they're still not really bad so i don't think it was leaking for long but it's definitely have warped it's definitely pulled the uh the bolts three or four of them anyway and it's Again, like I said, it's normally kind of the middle-ish ones that normally go. I don't know where that bolt's gone. Let me poke that bolt through. We didn't see that one, did we? No, I can't. It's stuck. Um, but yeah, so let's see how warped this is. Right, you can see the metal sparkles on there too. So yeah, we've got a few metal sparkles on a few of them, unfortunately. Right, I know you're supposed to really clean this, but because of the problem we've already found, I just want to quickly, quickly check this. The spec on this head is two thousandths of an inch. It can't be, it can't be out any more than two thousandths of an inch. So at the edge, solid. At this edge, solid. But look at this. Now I know we could have, a, we could be touching, that's kind of, you know, that's a bit tight there, but it's so loose there and so loose there. I know with all the black stuff, we could be touching it slightly. I understand that, but still we shouldn't be this far out. I'm just gonna change it to see how far we can actually go. Then I'll turn the camera back on. Right, so we're up on um, 0.9, not 0.2. So uh, two hundreds of a, of, or two thousandths of a mil. We're now at uh, 0.9. And as you can see, look, it's just going through, not going through there, not going through there, but in the middle, it's kind of, yeah, but here, directly in the middle, oh, it is, and there's still plenty of light, you can see that, just how much, oh, it's not really showing it, but believe me, we are, and you can only go 13 thous on this and then it can't be skimmed and we're at uh we're at nine already so yeah not good people not good now like i said you would have to i'm just going to put a torch behind it you can actually see look at the gap look at that gap there and look at it there and then it gets basically hardly anything to do this properly you wouldn't really need to uh clean this and be very careful how you clean it because you don't want to use any heavy sandpaper or anything because you'll destroy this but because we've got pull bolts, I just wanted to quickly see. So this head is on the limit of actually being able to be skimmed anyway, unfortunately. Right, so unfortunately this video is now over. Um, he's not going to do it because obviously the money it's going to cost to do all this isn't really worth it. You buy an engine cheaper. I think he's looking at an engine. I don't know if I'm going to install it for him. He might do it himself, but if I do, I'll film it. But unfortunately, yeah this isn't going to be fixed but what i might do is if i can get it off him i don't know what exactly he's going to do with this but i might get a rebuild kit for the vanos system and show you how to actually rebuild them because they are 
you know, fairly simple to do and it's one of them things you can do on your own, especially if you're getting a lot of um, noise coming from it as you're starting it. So look, unfortunately, I cannot go any further with this engine, but yeah, it is what it is. So look, hope it helps. Please like, share, comment and subscribe. Don't forget, links up here, links down below, but most importantly, don't forget, get your hands dirty. See you for the next one. Sorted.